Uh, welcome back to Stan Firm, Father Waltz, uh, just doing a little reactionary video. I actually saw this um, documentary, it's called um, a Le An Open Letter to the Christian Church. I think that's what it was called or something like that. It's a, it's a great documentary, uh, fascinating. I'm going to talk a little bit about the points of it in here, but there was this video in there and I saw it and that's kind of the one I want to react to, but I kind of want you at least to see at least the beginning. It's, you can watch. As we celebrate pride on the progress we've made over these past years, there's still work to be done. So to those of you out there who are still working against equal rights, we have a message for you. You think we're sinful? You fight against our rights. You say we all lead lives you can't respect. But you're just frightened. You think that we'll corrupt your kids if our agenda goes unchecked. Funny, just this once, you're correct. Damn. We'll convert your children. Happens bit by bit, quietly and subtly, and you will barely notice it. You can keep them from disco, warn about San Francisco, make him wear pleated pants, we don't care. We'll convert your children. We'll make them tolerant and fair. That's enough. <clears throat> anyway, so if you actually watch this, it's like a, it's almost like a Broadway musical uh, of this thing. And, you know, one of the, one of the things that, that struck me when I heard that, obviously just the facial expressions of this man, like, I'm not judging the guy's heart, but man, like it just, it does not look healthy. Anyway, <clears throat> we're, uh, we're coming up in the, in the, in the future what is it? I think the fourth or fifth Sunday of Lent when we had the readings from the blind man um, and, or the man born blind. And I, ex I explained that in a different video, you know, where the, 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 the man, you know, may have been born without eyeballs and that's why Jesus makes the clay and jams it into his eyes. And then when he washes, he has eyeballs and like, there's this crazy thing. But <clears throat> I think there's something we're supposed to see maybe on a, on a deeper level. Like that's, that's the miracle. That's, you know, the, the, the story of, of recreation, not restoration. Cause he creates eyeballs, but I've been thinking a lot about that. And I don't, I don't think we're supposed to say that we're like the man born blind. We are the man born blind, right? In the, in the sense that, you know, we, we, something has been, has gone awry in our sight and it's due to sin. I mean, like the, Think of the, you know, amazing grace, right? I was blind, but now I see. And it's through grace. It's through this salvific act that happens within, within our hearts through the redemption in Jesus. There is also, you know, Adam and Eve, you look in Genesis, the first thing they do after the fall is put on clothes. Why? Because something is fundamentally altered in their sight. They see differently. They don't see in this pure, innocent way anymore. They see now in this lustful way in which they can take instead of, you know, give. Archbishop Sheen once famously said, it's a great line, he says, sin is the only thing we don't learn more about by doing. <laughs> I love that line. Sin is, is the only thing we don't learn more about by doing. The more you sin, the more blind you become to it, the more addicted you become to it, the more, you know, habitually enslaved you become to it. You know, our sins of greed reduce us or reduce us to seeing people as a means to an end as far as financial gain. Our sins of lust reduce us to see people as a means of pleasure. Our sins of gluttony disrespect the body, the temple, the Holy Spirit that God has given us. All these sins blind us to the dignity of the human person, to our own dignity, to the dignity of others, and to truth, the truth of who we are that God has revealed to us. In, in fact, it's leading our whole culture into a, a stage of blindness. And one of the things that this guy says on here is he says, we'll convert your children, we'll do it little by little. Little by little. You know, that has gone on for so long, just this little by little by little. And it, 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 Christianity has brought into the world something in, to give us a new vision, right? Now, not every Christian has lived this way, but the truths of Christianity lead to a more loving, peaceful society. And this is... <clears throat> clearly shown, if you look at, you know, in the, in the 2,000 year history of, uh, of Christianity, <clears throat> I did my own study, and I'm sure people in the comment section are going to fight this left and right. I don't care what you say. I'm going to go with the most ridiculous number I read online. The most ridiculous. Now, what I did in my research, I found Christianity is, 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 is responsible for about 20 million deaths, right? Um, it, because of Christian conflicts, Christian wars. But the highest number I saw in there was 100 million. 
<clears throat> I'll even give you that. I'll give you 100 million, okay? Now, that's a terrible number. 20 million is a terrible number, right? But at the same time, that was in a 2,000-year span, right? 2,000 years. There was, okay, let's say 100 million deaths. I, I, I want to say 20 million, but I'll give you 100 million, whatever. In the last 100 years, atheistic communism has been responsible for over 150 million murders in this world. 150 million murders in 100 years. On top of that, there has been, I don't know if you know this, there has been more martyrs in the, in the Christ, in Christianity in general in the last 100 years than there has in the entire history of Christianity combined. So you tell me which is worth, atheistic communism or is it Christianity? I don't know. Look at the numbers. Look at the statistics. There are so many similarities right now, you guys, that are going on between Nazi Germany, Stalin's Russia, Mao's China, and the American progressive left uh, woke movement, if you look at it. There are three principles of Marxist ideology. The three principles are this. Number one, destroy the family. Number two, get rid of religion. And number three, take away private property. And if you cannot see the destruction of the family in our modern day and age, you got to be blind. <clears throat> you know, I think I've mentioned this before, but in, in uh, Fatima, Sister Lucia, she said that the final battle over between the kingdom of Christ and the kingdom of the Antichrist or the kingdom of Satan will be fought between marriage and the family. And you are seeing the radical destruction of the family happening right before our eyes. And what's happening is, so in, 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 in Mao's China, right, they had the Red Party and the Black Party, and, and the Red was the communists, and, and they were favored, and they got, you know, all these extra incentives if you were part of the Red Party, and people wanted to be part of the Red Party. <clears throat> they even sold out their family, friends, relatives, just to get into the Red Party because it was safe. The Black Party, the ones that were imprisoned, you know, killed, put in camps, whatever. Same thing happened in Nazi Germany, right? You have the Nazis on one side. And what, who are the first prisoners that are taken in Nazi Germany? They're political prisoners. They're the ones that are opposed to the Nazi ideology. Stalin's Russia, there's no difference, right? All of this, it was, and, 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 and you see it in today's modern day and age, this identity politics, right? In which that they affirm you, they tell you you're super cool, you get all this social, you know, media in, 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 incentive, what is that, in, incentives? Incentives. <laughs> incentivations, incentives. And then what they need is the last piece of the puzzle. And what that documentary argues, what the last piece of the puzzle is they need the church. They need the church. And the crazy part is the church is following left, is falling left and right, right? Nobody's standing up against this. Why? Because of fear. That's what happened in Nazi Germany. That's what happened in Mao's China. That's what happened in Stalin's. There's a great story about Nikita, I think it was Nikita Khrushchev, and, and he was under Joseph Stalin, right? And, and he disagreed with Stalin, and he wanted to get rid of Stalin. But the, and, and when Stalin finally was out and Khrushchev was in, I remember the, this story. I don't remember who, I, where I heard it from, but they were, they were all sitting in this big, like, auditorium. And Khrushchev is sitting there, and he's talking about, you know, the, the bad parts of Stalin and, and the bad things he did. And, and somebody shouted from the auditorium, why didn't you do anything about it? And it got real quiet, and, and Khrushchev just looked up, and he's like, who dared to overspeak me? And he said it was just silent. And then he sat back in his chair and he was like, now you know why I didn't do anything to Stalin. Because you couldn't do anything to Stalin. Because if you did, if you talked back, you were killed. Right? But it, and, and, and my fear is, I'm not, I'm not this doomsday guy, right? But like, my fear is if we don't start standing up and saying something, because here's the thing, you guys, the left, they are evangelizing machines. They, they evangelize 24-7. I get to, I mean, I try to evangelize all the time, but I get, I get 15 minutes on Sunday if I'm lucky. I get, you know, an hour and a half with my high school students once a week on Wednesdays. I get an hour and 15 minutes with my faith, faith formation kids on Wednesday night when they're pissed and tired and hate coming to class. The social media platform, which is largely run by this Marxist ideology, gets them all the time. As soon as they get on their phones, as soon as they walk into the schooling system, you guys, our schooling system is corrupt. You can, you can argue. I'm not saying there's not good teachers in the public system. There is. I'm not saying there's not good kids in the public system. There is. 
But there is no way to argue, if you look at it right now, how much they are trying to force this Marxist ideology onto your children. They're trying to convert your children. They're coming for them. And right now, we have people that are setting up transgender surgeries in our own state. They're trying to get the, the age moved down to 14, where they get to make the choice. Those are our politicians in North Dakota. What are they doing uh, on the West Coast, on the East Coast? And you see all these stories of detransitioners, right? And all, the, all that they've gone through. Nobody's listening to that. Everybody's just pushing this identity politics, identity politics. The book of Genesis is clear. God made a male and female. And he made them in his image and likeness. I think that, you know, if, if, if we don't do something soon, and when I say do something soon, I mean speak out. I mean, in your workplace. <clears throat> and it's going to cost you. I can't remember what his first name is, but his last name is Niemöller. I think it's, he was a, a Protestant pastor in Nazi Germany. He had that great line. That was actually an awful line, but it's remembered in the, in the annals of history. He said, you know, when they came for the trade unionists, I didn't say anything because I wasn't a trade unionist. And then they came for the socialists, and I didn't say anything because I wasn't a socialist. And then they came for the Jews, and I didn't say anything because I wasn't a Jew. And then they came for me, and there was no one, no one left to talk. I think that <clears throat> right now, if we don't get more word out, if we don't start taking a stand on God's promises, if we don't start preaching from the rooftops the truths of Christianity in the world that we live in, we're going to be in a lot of trouble. You know, as Cardinal Francis George famously said, he said, I'll die in my bed. My successor will die in prison. His successor will die a mar martyr in the public square. I mean, how long is that? What do we got left? 10 years maybe before that happens? It might even be sooner than that. You guys, we are only 80 years removed. 80 years from three of the most deadly and demonic regimes to have ever existed in the world. Joseph Stalin and communist Russia, Mao Zedong and communist China, and Nazi Germany and Adolf Hitler. Are we really that blind? Or do we just want to kind of turn and look away? You know, as I drove out to this, uh, what we always like to call it, the undisclosed location, um, <clears throat> there's a lot of nice houses out here, a lot of big houses, a lot of big boats, a lot of fun that people have on the river during the summer, a lot of fireworks go off on the 4th of July, a lot of people like to grill out, have a good time, drink some beers, get drunk, get high. You know, it said in the book of Genesis that leading up to the flood, people were being married and given in marriage. They were drinking. They were partying all the way up to the flood. We just, we need to really think about this. Are we turning a blind eye because we want to stay comfortable? Don't want to give too much. Don't want to stick our neck too far out there because it might cost us. If we don't do anything, it's going to cost us everything. So I encourage you, share this, get the word out, start preaching, man. Do it in love, but start preaching. God bless.